Hey guys, my name is Matt Johnson, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to create proxy files using Adobe Premiere Pro. And this technique is gonna enable you to massively speed up your video editing, regardless of the resolution of your footage that you're working with, whether it's 1080p, 4K, 6K, even 8K, it doesn't matter. Even if you have an older or slower computer, you're gonna be able to edit videos and cut through them like butter using this technique. I also have a link down in the description of this video to download my proxy preset files and sign up for my email newsletter. So, if you do not want to have to go through the whole hassle of creating your own presets using this tutorial, you can just download mine and use them instead, which should hopefully save you a bit of time. All right, let's open up Adobe Premiere. All right, guys, welcome to Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2018. I'm gonna go up here to help about, and you can see that I'm running version 12.1.0. If you are running an earlier version, you should be okay as long as you're running at least Premiere Pro CC 2016, which is the year that they introduced the proxy file workflow for Premiere. So as long as you're at least running that version, you should be okay. If you're not, well then I would recommend upgrading because the rest of this tutorial is not gonna be very useful for you. Moving on, as you can see, I've already created a project here and imported some A7S II clips, as well as a clip from my Phantom 4 Pro. All these clips are currently set to 23.976 frames per second at 3840 by 2160. So big stinking 4K video clips at very high resolution. These things are gonna be a pain to play back, but let's see how they do on our timeline here. This is some footage that I shot at the Glacier Lagoon in Iceland. Very, very pretty in 4K. It looks great. But if I start scrubbing through it here, you can see there's definitely a little bit of lag. And if I go over here to the Phantom 4 Pro clips, you can see that there's about a second in between it loading every single part of this clip here because this is an H.265 video file. It is very large. So if I click through here and wait for it to load and I play it, it'll play okay, but it definitely will drop some frames. And if you're starting to shift around through things here, this is kind of a pain because I'm like, wait, which clip am I on? And if I wanna edit quickly, that can be difficult. Thankfully, if I go over here and press this toggle proxies button, you're gonna first notice that there's this proxy icon that appears that I created. And then whenever I start scrubbing through, wow, look how smooth that is. That is smooth as butter. Hit play, plays back immediately, play again. I love proxy files. And now I'm gonna show you how to create them. First thing that you need to know is that I actually shot these video clips at 29.97 frames per second, and then I interpreted them to 23.976. And if your eyes are glazing over and you're like, Matt, what the heck do those words mean? Do not worry, I have another video all about frame rates that I would highly recommend that you watch. It's not too long, but it goes into detail about how and why I deal with different frame rate video clips and why I interpreted this footage. I highly recommend watching that because I'm gonna be applying what I talk about in that tutorial to this video. So I'll have it linked up in the corner and down in the description for you to watch. That way you're not super confused confused about what's going on. With that out of the way, let's look at how I would create a proxy file. So I'm gonna go up here to one of these video clips and I'm gonna select it, right click, and I'm gonna go down to proxy, create proxies. And that's gonna open up the create proxies dialog box here. And as you can see, we have a format that we can select and a preset. You've probably noticed by now though that this GoPro Cineform preset is not a preset that you currently have available in your editing software. And that's because this is a custom preset that I created for my proxy files. And it's something that I'm gonna walk you through how to do right now. Also, you can just download this preset file down in the description if you wanted to save time. Let's create this preset. We're gonna hit cancel because we don't need that window. And we're gonna open up Adobe Media Encoder. I love this program. The Swiss Army knife of video encoding, I love it. Whenever you have Adobe Media Encoder open, you're gonna go over here to the preset browser. If you do not have the preset browser visible, you're gonna go up here to window and select preset browser and it will magically appear. Under preset browser, you're gonna wanna ignore all this stuff and you're gonna wanna select the plus icon that says create new preset. And then you're gonna select create encoding preset and that will open up the encoding preset dialog box. Under preset name, we do not need to name this preset yet. We'll do that at the end. For format, this is very important. You're gonna wanna make sure that QuickTime is selected. And then for based on preset, mine currently says new preset. If yours doesn't say that for some reason, you can always select any of these other presets if you want to. NTSC, DV24P, for example. It does not matter which one you select because we're gonna customize everything. Do not worry about it. If you do have the option, select GoPro Cineform YUV 10-bit. 
that'll save you a little bit of time. Next, you wanna make sure that export video and export audio are both checked because our proxy files are gonna need video and audio. And then I want you to go down here to the video tab. Under video codec, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have GoPro Cineform selected. Cineform is what is known as a intermediate codec, meaning that it is optimized for video editing. It is not heavily compressed, it is very quick to scrub through, very quick to edit. I'm a big fan of editing with it. Also, the other reason that I recommend selecting GoPro Cineform is that it is a platform agnostic video codec, meaning that it works on Mac and it works on PC equally. There's no difference between the two. It works across both platforms. If you are on a Mac, you could select the ProRes option if you have that, but currently I'm on a PC so I cannot select ProRes, so I use Cineform and I'm really happy with how it looks. Under basic video settings now, you're gonna see that we have a ton of options. For quality, I wanna drag this all the way down to one because this is a proxy video file. I do not need it to be massive quality. I do not need crazy resolution. I'm more so looking for minimum of everything so I save space on my hard drive and so I can edit it as quickly as possible. Now under that we have a lot of other settings that we need to adjust here. First width and height. That is currently set to based on source but we want to check this box here and we want to change the width to 1280 and the height to 720. If your width and height icons are changing strangely, make sure that this little chain here has a slash through it. That way you can change the numbers independently. The reason that I select 1280 by 720 is that it is 720p HD resolution. I use HD lightly here, it's very low grade HD. But the reason that I like 1280 by 720 is that I find that whenever you pair it with a quality one, it is just enough quality for you to be able to see what's going on, but in terms of size, it's not massive. So. That's a really nice balance. That's why I prefer having my height and width set to that. Next, we have frame rate, field order, and aspect. And those are currently all set to based on source. But what I find is that sometimes Adobe can be a little crazy whenever you're letting it choose things on its own. So I prefer to customize all of these as well. So I'm gonna uncheck all three of these boxes. For frame rate, I'm gonna set it to 23.976, which looking up here, that matches with my frame rate of all of my video clips. So I wanna make sure that my proxy frame rate matches up with my native video frame rate. That way there isn't some weird disconnect between how they both work together, which we will talk about later, do not worry. For field order, you're gonna wanna select progressive, and for aspect, you're gonna wanna select square pixels 1.0. That is a standard for what most cameras are shooting with these days, those two settings, so you should be good. As far as render at maximum depth goes, I do not want that checked because I do not need that maximum depth because I am just making proxy files. For depth, YUV 10 BPC is good. Ignore all the rest of this. Do not check use maximum render quality because this is a proxy file. We do not need maximum render quality for that. Next, let's go up here to the effects tab and you're gonna see there are a ton of settings here. You do not need to concern yourself with any of these except for one, namely the image overlay box. We're gonna check that and that's gonna bring up this little box here that currently says applied none. This is where we're gonna add that nice little Adobe proxy overlay over here. So if you download my proxy preset files linked in the description of this video, I will include this proxy image here that you can then use as an image overlay. And the reason that I like using an image overlay is that I can tell at a glance, am I working with my proxy files or am I working with my native video files? Premiere doesn't make it super obvious, so I prefer having a proxy image overlay where I can tell at a glance, oh, I'm editing my my proxies. That makes things a little bit easier for me. I now need to navigate to that image file on my computer. So wherever you have downloaded it to, you're gonna go over here to none and you're gonna select choose. That is gonna open up your file dialog box and you're gonna wanna navigate to where your image is saved. I'm gonna select my proxy logo PNG file here and select open and then it's gonna let me choose where I want the logo to be positioned on the screen. In this case, I'm gonna go and select bottom right. Because I don't like it being in the middle, I find the bottom right works pretty well. With the image overlay added, the only thing that we need to do is now go up here and name our preset. So I'm going to erase new preset, and let's call this Cineform 1280x720, 23.976, quality one, watermarked. Because that way I can tell at a glance exactly which preset I am selecting. This has all of my settings that I need to know right here. Let's go down here and select OK. And ta-da, look, under user presets and groups, there is our preset that we made. Congratulations, we're halfway there. Well, further than halfway, we're almost done, don't worry. Next, we need to go up here to the plus icon again, and we're gonna select create ingest preset, which is different from an encoding preset. 
That's gonna open up the ingest preset dialog box. And the reason we have to create an ingest preset is because that is the kind of preset that Premiere supports for proxy files. I know it's weird. Now, with the ingest preset settings box open, you'll notice first that there are significantly less settings that we have to deal with than we did with the other preset, which, woohoo, that's very good news. Now, under transfer, you do not need to have copy files to destination box checked. Ignore that. Transcode files to destination is very important though, so make sure that you have that checked. And under destination, yours probably says some random older folder that you've been working in and you're like, why is that selected? In this case, it's an old wedding project that I haven't worked on in forever. The destination does not matter. Yes, this preset, as far as destination goes, does not matter. Do not worry about whatever folder it's pointing to. If yours is not pointing to a folder, just pick a random folder on your computer because as far as your destination goes, that is gonna be customized every single time that you create proxies. And those proxies are gonna be put into a folder next to your main video file. So the destination does not matter. That is going to be changed whenever you are creating proxies. Do not worry about that. In my case, I'm just gonna leave it as this old wedding film folder and not worry about it. Underneath it though, we have two settings that are very important though, namely format. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have QuickTime selected for your format. And then for your preset, you're gonna select the drop down here and we're gonna select the preset that we just made, namely Cineform 1280720, 23.976, quality one watermark. I want that preset selected. So with that selected, the only thing I need to do is go up here to preset name and let's name this Cineform 1280X720. 23 point, does this look familiar? Yeah, 23.976, quality one watermarked, ingest. We'll call it ingest, so that way we can make sure that we can differentiate between these two presets. With that done, let's hit okay. And suddenly you're gonna see down here that we have another user preset called the same thing, but it has ingest at the end. And that is the preset that we are now going to import into Adobe Premiere to create our proxy files. To import this preset file into Premiere, I need to know where it is on my hard drive. So I'm going to right click on the ingest preset here, and I'm gonna go down to reveal preset file. And that's gonna open up deep in the recesses of my Adobe programs folder where my presets are currently residing. And as you can see, there is the .epr file that we created. What you need to do is make sure that you remember exactly where this preset file is on your computer. In my case, I can look up here and see the exact folder that's in, but if you're on a Mac, this file may be saved to a different location. Regardless, you need to make sure that you know where this file is on your computer. With having properly noted where this file is located now, I'm gonna minimize this window, minimize my Adobe Media Encoder window, and go back into Premiere here. I'm going to right click on one of my video files, and I'm gonna go to Proxy, Create Proxies, and that's gonna bring up the old Create Proxies dialog box. Remember this? I'm now going to click on add ingest preset and that's going to bring up the file browser dialog box and as you can see it's currently asking me for a .epr file. Does that look familiar? Yeah because I just told you that we need to remember exactly where that file is on the computer. If you've already forgotten do not worry as I told you only minimize this window so you can see hey here's exactly where this file is. So Let's dig through here and find it. My goodness, that is buried, but there it is. With this preset that we just created selected, we're gonna select open, and ta-da, it now appears as a preset that we can select here in the Create Proxies dialog box. Remember how whenever we were setting up the ingest preset and I was telling you that the destination does not matter for where you're putting the proxies on your hard drive? The reason it does not matter is because of this little window right here. Under destination, it says next to original media in proxy folder. So that means anytime that you're creating proxies, they're gonna be put next to the original video files in another folder labeled proxies. So they're not gonna be buried in some old wedding folder, they're not gonna be buried on whatever folder on your hard drive you selected during the ingest process, they're gonna be put next to your video files. Very easy and simple to locate them, which I'm a big fan of. Now with that out of the way, let's make some proxies. I'm gonna select cancel here, and then I'm gonna go back up here and select both of these video clips because I want to make proxies for both clips that I shot with my A7S II. I'm gonna right click on them, go to proxy, create proxies, and that's gonna bring up the create proxies dialog box again. I need to make sure that my preset here is properly selected and all my other settings are good. So we're gonna press okay. And it's gonna say creating proxy jobs. Let's go down here to media encoder. And you're gonna see that both video clips are now here in media encoder and they're already processing very quickly. Look at that, just screaming through them. So great, proxy files are made very quickly in Cineform, I'm a big fan of that. We're already done, okay. Now I'm gonna click up here on one of the proxy output files and that opens up the folder that they're kept in. And as you can see, here are my proxy files. And then if I go up a folder, there are the native files. So they're kept in a nice little neat and tidy folder right next to the main ones. That is so great. 
Let's minimize this window, minimize the Adobe Media Encoder window, and we're back into Premiere. We have no way of telling if our proxy files have been made, do we? Oh wait, yeah we do. Let's go over here and hit the little toggle proxies button. Boom, look at that, there is the proxy logo. So now I can tell that these are proxies and look at that, they're playing, look at that. Man, that's awesome. Two other things that we need to talk about that are very important. First, whenever I am creating proxy files, imagine that I have an A7S II folder here for one camera that has like 400 clips in it, and then I have another A7S II folder here that has another 400 clips in it from another camera. Whenever I am creating proxy files for those two different cameras, I wanna make sure that I create the proxy files separately. So I'll select all 400 clips for one camera and I'll create those proxy files. Then I'll select all the 400 clips from the other camera and I'll create those proxy files. The reason I want those to be separate is that I found that occasionally Adobe can get a little bit screwy and it isn't sure exactly where it saved the proxy files files to, so you may end up with your folder here where suddenly all of your proxies from all your cameras are in one folder, and that can be kind of insane and a pain to organize. So I find that by rendering out my proxy files separately per camera, I'm prevented from Premiere getting confused and having to reorganize things later on. The second thing that we need to talk about, and this is also very important for some of you, if you are a person who, like me, interprets your video footage, so you shoot at 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, and then you interpret your video footage into 24 frames per second for exporting, then you need to listen to this part because I'm gonna to explain to you how to use proxies properly whenever you're interpreting your footage. But if you're somebody that shoots in 24 frames per second, edits in 24 frames per second, and exports at 24 frames per second, or shoots at 30, edits at 30, exports at 30, or 60, et cetera, et cetera, then you do not need to listen to me now, and you can just turn off the video, download the presets, and have a good time. But if you're a person who interprets your footage, this is very important. This is also the part where I plead with you to go watch my frame rates video, which is still linked in the corner and down in the description as well. Now, let me explain to you what the big deal is if you interpret your footage and use proxy files. And it's easier for me just to show you. So here are my video clips, untouched. These are the native clips. You can tell by how slowly they're loading. Let's go over here and let's turn on our proxy files. And boom, look at that. Suddenly, smooth editing. But I'm gonna stop about right here and I'm gonna start toggling the proxies off and on. And you notice what's happening. Off, on, off, on. The perspective's changing. Why is the perspective changing? Because the frame rate for our proxies does not match up with the frame rate for our native video clips. Yes, this is a major issue because you need to make sure that your proxies match up frame for frame with your native video clips. And in this case, it's not happening. Why is that? Well, the issue is that whenever you interpret your footage in Premiere by right clicking on your clip, going up to modify, interpret footage, and you're changing your frame rate here. You can see here that it was 29.97 and I've turned it to 23.98. The issue is that that whenever I go to create that proxy file, Adobe Media Encoder does not read from this dialog box, so it does not know that I've interpreted my footage to 23.98. As far as Adobe Media Encoder is concerned, it thinks that I am currently editing at 29.97 frames per second. So, my proxy files are 29.97 frames per second, but my native files are 23.976. You can see the disconnect here, that is gonna cause major issues in editing. So how do we fix this? How do we make the frame rate of our proxy files match up with the frame rate of our native video files? Well, I have good news for you, there is a workaround. What I first need to do is I need to go and delete the bad proxy file. So I'm gonna go back to my proxies folder for the A7S II. I'm gonna select these two proxy files that do not match up with the frame rate. I'm gonna press delete, and now they're gone. Going back here into Premiere, it's confused for a second and then they disappear, and now we don't have proxy files to worry about but we need to create new proxy files. So I'm going to select both of these video clips again, right click, select proxy, create proxies, and then with my Cineform preset that I made selected, I'm gonna press okay, just like I did before. But I'm gonna go down here to Media Encoder and I'm gonna watch it add the two proxy files for rendering, and then I'm gonna press stop and select no, and that is going to stop the render of these two proxy files. So they are now sitting here in Media Encoder, ready to be rendered if I hit play, but I don't wanna do that yet. First, I'm going to select both of these clips 
by pressing Control A, which will select everything. So imagine that you have like 400 video clips. You can press Control A or Command A on Mac, and that's going to select all of the video clips here. And I'm going to right click, and I'm gonna select Reset Status. So that is going to reset all of them so that they can be rendered again. Then I'm gonna select the output file for one of these video clips. It does not matter which one. And that's gonna open up the folder where the proxies are. And as you can see, it had already started to generate a proxy file, but it's only one megabyte. It didn't make it that far. We're going to select this video file and we're gonna delete it because I do not want any half-made proxies that have the wrong frame rate. So I need all of those gone. I'm gonna close this window. And back here in Media Encoder, I'm gonna press Control A again to select all of my clips. And then I'm going to right click and select Interpret Footage. Does that look familiar? My goodness. That is gonna bring up the Interpret Footage dialog box, which looks incredibly familiar, just like the one in Premiere. What you do need to be aware of is that opening up this dialog box can take quite a while. If you have 400 clips, 500 clips, 1,000 clips, this Interpret Footage dialog box can take anywhere from five minutes to open to 10 minutes. It's taken 20 minutes before, depending on the speed of your computer and your hard drive. So this can take quite a while to open. I wish it was faster. Adobe needs to figure that out. But just so you're aware, if it looks like your computer is frozen up whenever you clicked interpret footage, do not worry. It is not frozen up. It is probably still going through in the background, preparing to open up this dialog box. Let's go down here under frame rate and I'm gonna select assume this frame rate and I'm gonna type 23.976, which happens to match up perfectly with the frame rate over here for our native video files. Then I'm gonna press OK. And just like whenever you pressed interpret footage the first time, Adobe Media Encoder may take quite a while to accept this change. Once that is done though, you can double check it by right clicking on just one of the clips. You do not need to select all of them, just right click on one, interpret footage, you can see that it has accepted this change. And now I'm going to press play. And that's gonna render out our proxy video clips here very quickly. I love how fast that is. I'm telling you, if everything was just proxy video quality size, things would be so quick. Unfortunately, it's not. With that now done, let's minimize Adobe Media Encoder and let's go back over here to Premiere and I'm gonna press the toggle proxies button here. And you'll notice that it's not working because occasionally what can happen is that one of the proxy files will become detached. If I scrub over here, you'll see that this proxy file is active, but not the first one. If you ever have proxy files that are not connected properly, you can just right click on the video file that matches up with the one that is not connected. Right click, go to proxy, attach proxies, and that's gonna open up the attach proxies dialog box. You'll click attach, and that's gonna open up a media browser window here, and then you can select your proxy. It's looking for the proxy to C104. Here's the C104 proxy. Let's hit okay, and now that proxy is attached to the video clip. So I can now scrub through it here, look how buttery smooth this is, and let's turn it off and on, and see the proxy file and the native video file are now matched up perfectly between the two. And we're done. Congratulations. So yes, it can take a little while to initially create proxies, but once you have done it and you see how smooth it is to be editing a proxy versus editing a native 4K file, ooh, totally worth it. I am a huge fan. And that's my entire proxy footage workflow. I hope it helps you out. In case you haven't yet, you can still download my proxy preset files down in the description of this video. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave one below or get in touch with me through my website, whoismat.com. It is also a massive proxy footage sized, well, no, not that, because those are actually quite small. It is a native resolution footage sized help to me if you would consider liking this video and subscribing if you want to see more videos like this in the future. I also have a ton of links down in the description to my Instagram, to my Facebook, to sign up for consulting. All of that is down there in the description if you want to check it out. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.